Back in 2008, there was a motherboard architecture called X58, and it was released into the wild, and it was quite well received. There was i7-920s, which were four core eight threaded CPUs, and they overclocked pretty well, and everyone loved them, and that was like the way to go back then. Uh, but in 2018 is X58 and what was released in 2010, which was a six core 12 threaded Xeon, still the way to go, especially if you're a gamer. Well, today we're gonna to be testing this CPU, the X5660, which you can still get on AliExpress for 20 US dollars or a little bit under that. That's free shipping as well. And we're gonna be putting that on an X58 motherboard, overclocking this CPU to 4.5 gigahertz with an air cooler in a sub-ideal ambient temperatures. This is 27 degrees ambient. And we're gonna be testing this with the new king of gaming, the RTX 2080 Ti. And then we're gonna be comparing that, of course, against the granddaddy of gaming, which is the 9900K clocked to five gigahertz. So ladies and gentlemen, grab your Xeon capes, hopefully they're used, and strap them on, because today is gonna to get a little bit interesting. But before things do get interesting, are you ever down the gym or you go out on a date with someone and you're thinking, damn, I wish I had more money for food. If you're that person and you're hungry, then you can save money on a Windows 10 Pro key and then go out with that extra money you've saved and go buy some more food. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, bringing you a 12% discount with the coupon code TYCSK. So simply go to the website, go get yourself a legit Windows 10 single end user license key, bang it in, and you're gonna have happy days ahead. So if you wanna save yourself some money, then the link is in the description below. So here we have it, the eight year old CPU that is the X5660. Now there are other variants of this CPU, namely the X5650 and also the X5675, which is my personal favorite. They basically differ in the max multipliers and you can get other CPUs like the W3680, which have unlocked multipliers. But the motherboard that we're using is a Maximus Rampage from ASUS. Now when it comes to X58, it is important to choose a good motherboard to overclock these CPUs on. Some X58 motherboards won't even support Xeons from the get-go. Take, for example, the UD7, which I have here in the studio. This thing is complete garbage when it comes to overclocking. It only managed to support uh, one skew of memory that we had here, and all the other memory just didn't work on this board. Very weird problem. But then we pulled out the Maximus Rampage, and it was happy days. We managed to get the B clock to 214 megahertz, and at these settings, we could then lock in 4.5 gigahertz without having to rely on Intel's turbo settings. And this led to gaming performance, which was pretty damn good, considering we're coupling it with a graphics card that costs over $1,200. That's over 60 times more expensive than the CPU we have here. Not to mention the 9900K costs in excess of 500 US dollars. So that's an expensive CPU on its own. But let's pull up some benchmarks for you guys at 1080p ultra settings. First off, we're gonna show the worst case scenario, and this is Far Cry 5. Uh, which is still single threaded IPC dependent. And what we saw here with the Xeon X5660 was we got 97 average FPS versus 158 on the 9900K. So there was a big gap and it was one to the likes of around 50%. Uh, then we scale it up to 1440p Ultra, which is a spot arguably you'd wanna be with if you're buying a card like an RTX 2080 Ti. And here we saw the gap lessen where we got 96 average FPS and then we compare that to the 132 on the 9900K. So we can see at 1080p, we were CPU bound in both cases, uh, at least according to the 1440p numbers. And funnily enough, it showed that the Xeon, especially at 1440p Ultra, can still play games with 100 Hertz monitors, which is a fantastic experience, especially if you're going with my personal favorite, which is an ultra wide 35 inch, 100 Hertz, and you play at high settings. Moving on now to Dota 2. In the past, I've tested this at 1080p low settings, because I guess that's where a lot of competitive gamers would be uh, playing this game at. Uh, but when we step it up to 1080p maximum settings, here we actually do expose quite a big gap between these two CPUs. We saw the likes of 153 average FPS versus 218 on the 9900K. So that was a difference of around 33%. Uh, going to 1440p Ultra, saw pretty much the exact same thing happening, 148 average FPS versus 215. So the uh, scaling of the resolution didn't really affect performance because the graphics card still has a lot of room to breathe. It wasn't being stressed anywhere near 100% in both scenarios. However, the 1% lows uh, did scale with the CPUs. They were really smooth 
on both the 9900K and also the uh, X5660. And then moving over to CSGO, 1080p Ultra settings. I know uh, practically no competitive gamers play this game at these settings, uh, but we decided to change things up and we saw 355 average FPS with a 1% low of 105 versus 472 with 123 1% low. And then we compare the 1440p numbers and the gap lessens to 279 versus 360 FPS. So there was a gap in these first three games. Uh, definitely it was there and the RTX 2080 Ti being a lot more powerful than the 1080 Ti does help expose this gap ever so more. Uh, moving over to GTA 5, 1080p uh, maximum settings, we saw 108 FPS versus 151. 1% 1 lows were very good on both sides, with the 9900K actually being a little bit odd in that it does sort of break the engine in this game when it gets too high an FPS figure. Uh, but moving over to 1440p ultra settings, here's where things start to look more GPU bound and less CPU bound with 93 FPS versus 98. So there's virtually no difference between the $20 CPU and the $550 CPU at 1440p Ultra and GTA 5. Moving over now to Overwatch, which is another competitive title with a 300 FPS limit. Uh, here at 1080p Ultra settings, we saw 222 average FPS versus 297. So the RTX 2080 Ti wasn't being capped at all. Uh, and the 9900K could definitely take it to the brink of 300 FPS. The 1% lows were very good on both sides of the fence. You could get a very playable experience on both CPUs at 1080p, uh, but stepping things up to 1440p Ultra did see a bit of uh, stress on the GPU this time around. Uh, and then we saw 199 average FPS versus 263. Uh, so there was quite a gap in this game by about 25% at 1440p and a similar gap at 1080p. But we did test this game in pretty much a worst case scenario in a battle with just mass roadhogs everywhere, stuff going on, and then I was bashed in and I was just going ham. And so the trend that we're starting to see is that maybe with the 1080 Ti, there wasn't too much of a difference, but now we're stepping it up to the RTX 2080 Ti. So we are now starting to see a gap finally be exposed on the Xeon versus the latest and greatest. But let's roll through some more popular Twitch games at the moment. Black Ops 4, uh, Call of Duty. And here we have here 141 FPS versus 237 on the exact same spot in blackout mode. The 1% lows were very controlled on both, uh, but did scale in terms of the average FPS to the 1% lows. So there was quite a difference here and that was actually over 50%. So the 9900K did very well in Black Ops 4, which is quite a CPU demanding title just as it is graphically when you max the settings out. Stepping things up to ultra at 1440p saw the gap widen a lot where we saw 124 average FPS versus 160. So around 30% at 1440p Ultra. And uh, moving over to the last title, however, Rainbow Six Siege, a very popular multiplayer title, also very popular on Twitch. 1080p Ultra settings saw we got 97 FPS with a minimum of 47. And then we compare that to the 9900K, which scored 103 and 65 minimum. Stepping things up to 1440p Ultra saw a 57 average with 36 minimum versus 61 and 46 respectively. So there was virtually no difference when it came to maxing Rainbow Six Siege out between the $20 CPU and the $550 CPU. But with all that aside, we can now move on to conclusion time and also throw the Cinebench scores in for you guys where we got over a thousand points on the X5660 and around about 137 single threaded, which the single threaded performance isn't that great. But keep in mind, this CPU itself is over eight years old. And uh, we compare that to the uh, 9900K, for example, that is getting over 2000 CB and also on the single threaded score over 200 points. So the difference is there and I'm glad to see Intel in the last couple of years have uh, definitely picked things up with the 8700K and now the 9900K. Uh, but what comes after this is anyone's guess is the 9900K as you guys uh, know if you haven't seen the reviews already. Uh, it's really pushing the limits of the ring buff. I don't really think it's going to get a whole lot better than this, especially considering Intel's new 10 nanometer architecture has been facing delays and whether that will clock to uh, 5 gigahertz like the 9900K will is anyone's guess. But when it all comes down to it, we do have 500 megahertz of clock speeds on the 9900K. We do have better IPC and we do have two cores. Uh, and it is making a difference in games with a graphics card that's costing over 1200 US dollars. So the X58 Xeon going into late 2018 and most likely most of 2019, because we haven't really seen a whole lot of development in graphics cards, uh, will be still relevant. And I'm more interested now after these tests 
in testing with something like an RTX 2070 or an RTX 2060 when that's released and seeing how well it performs. Because for $20, the value is phenomenal. You're not gonna get this kind of value out of CPU anywhere else in the world. Uh, and then of course, couple that with the cheaper DDR3 memory. In this case, we used off sticks. We used a red stick and two uh, just random four gigabyte sticks and they managed to get them over 1700 megahertz and that was absolutely fine. It gave a very smooth and playable experience, not just to my eyes, but also when we look at the 1% low numbers as well. And then of course the motherboards, this is the biggest problem facing X58 and it always has. You have to get a good motherboard and then you have to get them at a good price. But if you guys have seen my previous deal hunts in the past, you'll know that I come across X58 motherboards here and there. This one that we actually had on the test bench was uh, given to me as part of the GTX 690 deal that I picked up. Uh, so that was crazy to see that because he just said, I've got no use for this. I can't get it working. And all it really needed was a heat sink on the North Bridge. Otherwise it would have shut off because that silicon on the North Bridge does need cooling just like a CPU would need cooling too. And uh, needless to say, it's a phenomenal motherboard and it does do the job very well. Anyway, the last thing to talk about is the power consumption itself. We had the 5 GHz 9900K in Ida64 juicing about 280 watts from the wall. And then we had the X5660 juicing around 300 watts from the wall. Uh, and the CPUs themselves, I can't get a reading of the CPU on the X5660 directly, but I'm willing to bet it's actually using less power than the 9900K. Uh, but because the motherboard has more components on it, we're using three sticks of DDR3 memory. Uh, that's where your extra power consumption would actually be coming from because we have a Cooler Master cooler here and that handled the overclocks absolutely fine. Temperatures were around 80 degrees and they were coming in lower than that of the 9900K, which gets up at five gigahertz close towards 100 degrees with a custom water cooling loop. So there you have it. The motherboard, the Z390 is gonna be more expensive. The water cooling needed to get five gigahertz on the 9900K is going to be more expensive. And then the CPU itself is going to be a lot more expensive. But I guess that's the price you pay when you want the latest and greatest and coupled with an already overpriced RTX 2080 Ti when you look at price performance. This is one that's shaping up to be a conclusion of when you want premium, you're gonna to have to pay for it. Anyway guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's comparison with the X58 Xeon versus the latest and greatest Z390 and it's 9900K. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, but I'm thinking to myself, maybe a more relevant comparison would be testing the value kings of the new price performance, say the Ryzen 5 2600, and even overclocking that on a stock cooler, and then testing something from the 9 series from Intel, which is their value king, which I'm actually yet to identify which one it would be. I'd say maybe the i5-8400 is still the most relevant choice from Intel's side, but with that aside, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Love reading them as always. And let us know as well, are you still rocking an X58 Xeon? Because I feel like they're still so relevant, even still in late 2018. And especially when we start comparing these two CPUs with more affordable graphics cards, for instance. Look forward to giving you guys these Xeon comparisons because I know you love them. Uh, but also on that note, don't forget to check out Today's video sponsor, SCD Keys. If you want a cheap Windows 10 Pro key, then the link is in the description below with the coupon code. And I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.